Hello everybody, James Lawrence Alcott back again for another video. It's the knockout stages and I'm watching all these games because I'm stuck in Germany. So I thought I might as well chat to you about it. Um, I really enjoyed that. Did you? I, I just thought that was a cracking game of football. Um, a few people around me saying it was a, a, a bit boring, but I, I think for like, you know, like a good nil-nil, it felt a little bit like that. And uh, Uruguay have gone through. I thought it was tight. I don't think Portugal played badly. It'd be interesting to see what you guys think. Do you think that uh, that Portugal played badly? I, I felt like it was a kind of it was one of those where it, do you know what it reminded me of. It reminded me of Atletico Madrid versus Arsenal. I felt like they had control of the game from arm's length. They allowed Portugal to have the ball, move up the pitch, which is what Portugal slowly do. That's how they work. They don't really attack with any real pace. They kind of move the ball forward with quality midfield players that they've got and then look to get crosses into Ronaldo and, and they look to do that but I, I think they could have crossed the ball a little bit more given Ronaldo that opportunity to use that leap that he's got to allow him to get them back into the game but great um, telepathy between Suarez and Cavani for the first goal Cavani's head was something I don't think I've, I've really seen before it was weird it came like off his face but he was brave enough to let it smash him in the face and went in, got, it, got him his first goal. Uh, the, the game sort of obviously continued and Pepe stepped up and scored a, another kind of basic football goal. But, but I thought the game was, it was so tight. But I think what you saw was we, often we talk about world-class strikers, world-class attacking midfielders. But talk about world-class defenders and Godin and uh, Jimenez, Godin in particular, I thought was unbelievable and just showed that you know if you're talking about world class in each different position Godin still at this age is is quality he really really is quality uh, onto the second half and Cavani I mean that's what you're going to see in these games is that they are going to be tight I think I think in modern football there everyone's fit everyone's organized everyone can hold on to the ball everyone can pass the ball about and and with that it makes it harder for one man to kind of really beat teams one on one and actually I think people will concentrate teams concentrate on the whole team ethic more than getting in one on one situations and allowing wingers to beat their fullback like teams used to do in the old days but that said there are still those moments where those top players can think outside the box as well drilled as all these players are and that's what I think Cavani did there I think he showed pure lethal striking ability if that makes any sense like he was just prolific he knows how to score goals he knows what a goalkeeper's thinking and he knows how to sort of deceive and get the goal done get the job done and I thought opening his body the strike was fantastic right in the bottom corner nothing Patricio could do about it and he got on that that 2-1 lead and then after that Portugal had the ball they had the ball most of the second half of the first half they had the ball for most of the the second half but couldn't really pick them apart um Uruguay are going to be really, really hard to beat. I think Cavani, that's a massive loss if, if they don't have him. I think after that, it was Suarez up there on his own and didn't really have much else with him. And that's why I think having those two up top is so crucial for them because they, they stay solid. They don't give much away. And then they hope that those two can do stuff as they as they move forward up the pitch. But for me, Godin was the man of match. I thought Laxal at left back was superb for them. I mean, his hair is naughty as anything and he needs to sort that out. But, you know, his performance, his energy, uh, his ability to win fouls for the team, I thought was, was brilliant. And I thought Uruguay were, were solid and strong. Can they win it? You would imagine that someone will be a bit too much. A bit like Atletico Madrid when it comes to the Champions League. They kind of they can get so far, but I wonder if they can make it the whole way. But for Portugal, I mean, they were a resolute side who I thought, as I say, I don't think they played that badly. But it's going to be fine margins and it's going to be moments and you just got to hope that your players can step up and do it. Ronaldo follows Messi out of the World Cup. He's had a great start to the World Cup as the game went on. I think, again, we, as you saw, it, it was about getting the ball to him. That's the difference between Messi and Ronaldo and this whole thing. And this whole GOAT debate has been going on the whole tournament. But really, Ronaldo is lethal. He's awesome. Um, that's how I describe it. Ronaldo's awesome. Messi's amazing. Um, I know that sounds ridiculous, maybe, but he is awesome in terms of how prolific he is if you can get the ball to him. But his Portugal side were unable to get the ball to him in any kind of real dangerous areas. I felt like they should have crossed the ball more. Maybe Caresma could have come on earlier, got a few more crosses in, um, and just utilised what he's got in terms of his leap and his heading and his and his just his, his great finishing. I think that's maybe where they, they fell down a little bit, Portugal, because they had the ball and they moved it up into the final third quite a lot. But they go out, and I think that's a... I mean, it's, 
it's a big team in terms of a team that knows how to win games and, and is resolute. And uh, it was a battle of two resolute teams, and Uruguay sort of won the day with, with some moments. And I think that's, as I say, is, is how this entire tournament is going to go down. So that's what I think about it. Let me know what you think about Uruguay. How far can they get in this competition? How crucial is Cavani and Suarez to that team? Can they really do anything if either of those guys are missing? And for Ronaldo, is that it? Can you see him playing another one? I'll be honest, I can see both Messi and Ronaldo having another go at it in four years' time. But do you think that might be the end for, for Ronaldo and Portugal? Let me know in the comments below. Trying to get back on the videos now and reacting. This is the neutral one. This is the great thing about my channel. So that's why you should subscribe because I can talk about any game because I like any game of football, as do you. That's why you're watching right now. So I hope you've enjoyed it and I appreciate it. And I'll see you soon. Bye.